What's up, everybody? Welcome back for day 62. Today I was introduced to the different types and functions of the pedal steel guitar tone bar. After brushing up on some scales and chords on the steel and playing through some old licks I learned earlier in my journey, I kept pushing on in Paul Franklin's course. There are two main types of steel guitar tone bars, the Stevens bar and the standard round bar. Paul Franklin suggests practicing with a Stevens bar when you're first learning how to hold a bar or as a refresher course because its grooves make it easier to hold and make fret visibility clear. The round bar is more difficult to learn with initially because it doesn't have grooves like the Stevens bar and it doesn't give a player a view of the frets. Bars are typically sold in eight, 10, and 12 string lengths, but Paul doesn't recommend using this measurement as a marker for which bar you should use. Instead, he says to pick out the length that fits snugly into your palm. He and so many other pedal steel players use a 7 8 inch round bar. Chrome bars are usually preferred for tone, where stainless steel bars create a brighter sound. Many incredible steel players, most notably Robert Randolph, use the Stevens bar, as do lap steel and resonator or dobro players. You might hear that the Stevens bar does not work on pedal steel, but Robert Randolph answers that debate. I'll leave a link in the description to a video of Robert Randolph playing pedal steel, and you won't be let down if you check him out. Drop a like on this video if you're following along with my journey, or if you have a particular tone bar you enjoy using on pedal steel. To practice tone bar control, Mr. Franklin suggests practicing moving the tone bar forward and back as you play the different string groups. From what I saw in the video from this part of the lesson, this means sliding the bar across the strings, not sliding them up and down the frets. Also, he suggests practicing how to hold the bar correctly to avoid the wave. Paul's explanation of the wave was somewhat unclear as Paul didn't really define the wave beyond that of a newbie steel player sliding into and out of notes in their attempt to find the correct notes. Let me know down in the comments what your understanding of the wave is. Paul mentioned that it had to do with vibrato and contrasted it with rocking the hand, but other than that, I'm still not 100% sure what I should be avoiding. That said, I'm still working on holding the bar correctly because it is way different than fretting notes with only my fingers as I'm used to on the six string guitar. Paul teaches students to put their thumb down by the flat end of the bar, brace the opposite side with the middle finger, then seat the bar towards the knuckle closest to the palm of the index finger. This technique is tricky for me and it feels like I'll need to forget whatever I was doing before in order to get this down. In the video, Paul references his Hawaiian guitar teacher, Wanda Bruni, and her emphasis on using the bar correctly. Paul says that it's a good idea to listen to non-pedal players to hear their bar control, tone, and bar slant techniques. Without pedals, there was more emphasis on clean picking, blocking, and tone. So all note movements came from the slide and the bar slants. Songs by the great Jerry Bird, particularly the album Admirable Bird, exemplify what Paul is talking about here. While it may not be your favorite style of music, Jerry Bird's virtuoso style remains a benchmark for clean and accurate playing, so that's why Paul recommends it. It's a good idea to start listening to steel guitar music from a technique perspective, so that's what I'm going to do. I'll listen to the sounds that are being produced and try to emulate them on my own. Clean, clear picking and bar control are the universal signature of steel guitar masters, so I'll try to emulate the masters of the Hawaiian non-pedal steel guitar. Here's a snapshot of my notes of this section of the course. Leave a comment down below your choice for the best tone bar for pedal steel guitar. Paul Franklin says that he uses a BJS chrome bar because it gives a warmer sound than a stainless steel bar as I mentioned before, and at the end of the day, it comes down to personal preference. That said, let me know what you enjoy using. Thanks for watching today's video, and as always, play every day.